Now, is it Gunnort or Nort? We'll get to that. <laughs> Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish, and you are listening to Vacation the Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to the fifth episode of Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil, joining me as always, master of the core, if that's you old man. (laughs) <laughs> as well hey everyone <laughs> and rookie it is oh this is matt this is matt the rookie <laughs> i got my ring i, I don't know if i'm a, i don't know if i'm uh officially it, it uh you know i could have been given a given this uh designation by some clowns i don't know how official it is but i'm here i'm ready to podcast about green lantern you've been chosen you you've got a ring but now i gotta go through some training poozer <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you gotta love the uh, the clowns. Oh know. my lord! <laughs> we'll get there though. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting ahead of things. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Before we get to the issues tonight, yeah, Green Lantern nine through twelve. A guy in his Gnor or Lord Lord whatever, however you want to say it. Uh So, Will, I see uh, things are progressing nicely on the uh, Kickstarter. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, we sent the files in on Monday, and I got the proofs back. And I'm about ready to tell them to fire up the presses. So that's nice. Cool. Um, comics will be – this will be this uh, area that I'm in will become uh, shipping central in a couple of weeks. Oh, so. <laughs> so cool. That's awesome. Congrats. I uh, look thanks. forward to getting, getting my issue. It um, will be in the the book is in the mail. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Russell, from the new Tomes of Evil podcast? Yes. Hello. <laughs> I, I keep meaning to listen. Yeah, I guess he started. Uh, this guy Ray uh, discovered. Uh, yes, he he's I guess he's a new podcast where he focuses on like a different villain every episode. Oh, cool. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember. Uh... Yeah. Some chatter about that. We, we, did we talk about that on the Ultimate Spider Cast? Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm yeah. For sure. sure, Ray, we brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think Ray's already Ray did one of the first three episodes. Because Ray does every podcast on planet Earth. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When's he going to be on ours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. Sorry. <laughs> let's put DL. Let's do Green Lantern villain on one show. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, if you do Green Lantern, you probably got to do Sinestro, right? He's kind of the the one, right? But you know, I mean, we get some good ones. You get uh, like the the crazed Superboy. You know, when you get up to Volume Four of Green Lantern, you get the the Anti Monitor becomes. You know, they all kind of become <laughs> part of the core. <laughs> I mean, Mongol. Mongol, yeah. <laughs> Sinestro was already taken. What? <laughs> Atrocitus, there you go. Yes. <laughs> a long way from that, but yes. You just do like red lanterns in general. Or Larflees, you know, he's he's kind of <laughs> Oh yes. The yeah, the orange lantern. Mm-hmm. What is that? Greed. <laughs> <laughs> yep, greed. Oh, but uh no, I was gonna mention some green lantern sightings uh this week. Uh Infinite Frontier number zero. Oh, cool. Basically setting up everything to come for DC. Uh, well, I think we already talked about this, but uh, yeah, Alan Scott came out to his kids. Uh, mm-hmm. And then there was like a, just a quick few. Like I said, there's a quick few pages of everybody just setting up everyone's stuff. But um, yeah, they had um, John Stewart and Simon Baz taking the new Team Lantern to Oa, I guess, to meet the Guardians. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm trying to see. So I guess I don't know if they're gonna be like more core based, but I guess how Jessica and Kyle uh how it says they're protecting the crux world. So I, I don't know if they're gonna be more solo. How Al and uh, Jessica Cruz. Well, 
Well, and we still have far sector going on too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, at the end of that last uh, future state, that uh, yeah, she came in and was the own at Hal. So I don't know when they're gonna maybe when her series ends because I think she still has like two issues left. I think it's like twelve. Is it a twelve issue series? Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure, yeah, because ten came out, yeah, a couple weeks ago. And we got like an evil version of John Stewart in uh, Crime Syndicate number one. <laughs> cool. Uh, powering? Is that what they called him? <laughs> uh, uh, I think so, yeah. I mean, again, it, you know how they always reboot this every couple uh, yeah. years. But yeah, there's there like a big multiversal reboot. Yeah, this is like, a, once again, a new like Crime Syndicate. But yes, I guess uh, yeah, they were doing they were doing Ultraman's origin, and I guess did he? Sh he must have shown up in the fifties or sixties because I guess in six in nineteen sixty three he killed Kennedy. Oh, okay. As a, <laughs> he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just I mean, yeah, a lot of it's the like the same. Yeah. Uh, Yes, I think John Stewart is power ring, and oh my lord, Pre President of the United States is uh, Oliver Queen. Okay, yeah. <laughs> probably no hard traveling heroes in that universe, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it, and because uh, you know, it, it, you know, everything's flopped in that universe. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess the first president of the United States was Benedict Arnold. Okay. <laughs> Because the town, because the town isn't Washington D.C. Because at the end they're like, you know what? That after the whole Oliver Queen scene, uh, what is it like the Secret Service? Or it's like, man, nothing like this ever usually happens in or you know Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> in Arnold D.C. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it seems like it's gonna be fun. It's only like a six issue limited series, so yeah, it might be a, worth looking into. Cool. Yeah, it wasn't a big week for comics. I'm like, yeah, I gotta try. All right, so, so you guys been reading anything new or different? Um, oh, uh, uh, Black Cotton. I've been reading a lot of Scout comics of late, uh, and Black Cotton number one came out, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it takes a, it reverses the racial roles, and you have a, an officer involved shooting of, of uh, an unarmed uh, person. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's it's a grayscale book. It's done in, in black and white and grayscale, so. Uh, yeah, pretty good book. Who, I, who writes that one? I heard it's pretty good. Brian, hang on a second, and I can tell you. Uh, I've got it right up here. Um, uh, is it Patrick Foreman, I think, and Brian Hawkins? Uh, oh. The artist by, and I can't remember his first name, Paragrugany? Or, <laughs> but I, I went ahead and got, I love this cover. Uh, it's the it's one of the limited covers on uh, the Scouts comic store, which was cool. I thought was pretty darn awesome. So I went ahead and picked it up. It's uh, very oh, it, pulp, pulp looking, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then um, it's it's not really out, but uh, in that order, I also got the kind of the White Ash presents Glarian, and Glarian is uh, tearing it up on Kickstarter right now. It's a huge. Huge launch for uh, uh, Charlie Stickney, and uh, I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna completely jack up her name. Uh, his artist is uh, Romina Morinelli, and cool. she's doing some pretty amazing work on that. So that's pretty cool too. Cool, Maddie. You reading anything new? Uh, I'm not. I I just started uh, checking out this this comic writer and artist uh, Steve Niles. He's he's written some stuff. He did uh, it kind of leans more towards like the horror comics, but he did uh, something called Thirty Days of Night. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. and and he did uh, he was sort of like uh, he did a bunch of Spawn books and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, and I just started reading the the new Stephen King book that came out the other day. So, which is that kept me busy so far, but. And and then all these Green Lantern comics, so nothing <laughs> nothing super new. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, uh, well, Flash season seven premiered last night. Uh, Superman and Lois premiered last week. Uh, oh yeah, what do you guys think of Superman and Lois? I've really enjoyed it. I liked it. Yeah, I just watched mm-hmm. episode two right, right, before, right before we jump on. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's I have too. not seen it. Not seen it yet. It's on CW. Is that yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's like Tuesdays at nine after the Flash. Now, yeah, the first because the first uh, week was extra long, but yeah, now it's like Tuesdays at nine. Yeah. Ah, gotcha. I mean, it's good. I mean, it's shot nice. I mean, it almost looks like movie quality. I mean, they put some money into this. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like his Superman. I think it, they did a really good job on the, you know, the costume, and then the the actor does a, I think, a really convincing Superman. He's a good Clark too. So yes. Yeah. And I think was it yes? It might have been just yesterday. They already uh, confirmed it for season two. They renewed it. So. Oh, that's cool. Well, they renewed some of those. Like, yeah, Flash just started season seven last night. They already gave it a season eight. So, wow, that's interesting. Very yeah. cool. I know. And I know this is a DC show, but uh, everyone caught up on One Division. I have not. I had a busy weekend, so I have not seen the last, uh, the most recent one. So, well, I've kept. I've not. I mean, I haven't been super uh, vigilant about avoiding it, but I. I have scrolled past a few things where people usually speak their thoughts about it right away. So I was yeah, gonna, I was gonna I was gonna recommend that you avoid this thing called the internet. Probably yeah, until yeah, yeah. Watch yeah. it. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the internet seems to like the one division. Yes, but yeah. we could binge it this weekend because the finale is this weekend. So oh yeah, yeah maybe maybe I'll do a double feature if I can hold. Now I'll probably try to watch it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, and then I guess the week after we get uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? No, nah, I think we get at least a week breaks. So I think uh, I think it's like the nineteenth or whatever that Friday is. Yeah. Okay. I think we I think we get like one week break in, in the middle there. I, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this thing's gonna end on a cliffhanger because I know they said it's gonna go. Re, you know, gonna, I think they even they confirmed you're gonna see one the next in Doctor Strange too. So. Yeah, the multiverse of madness, right? Yes, which doesn't hit till 2022. So. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Although we, although they did announce uh, the next Spider-Man movie is coming in December. Oh yeah, is it No Way Home? Is that the title of it? Yeah, No Way Home. Yeah. So I wonder if he's gonna be stuck in the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all stuck in the multiverse? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Come on. <laughs> And Disney, I'm sorry, sorry for all the Marvel talk, but Disney, can you please just announce that Black Widow is going to be, you know, streaming the same day it's in theaters? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's going to happen. First weekend in May. Come on. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Oh, I, I read, uh, it looks like uh, San Diego Comic Con is kind of canceled, but maybe something for November, but that may or may not happen. Yeah. I, I, I think I saw that on Twitter, but I'm not sure if that's accurate. Yeah, probably, probably gonna be mostly or all virtual again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, people get sick uh, on a regular year going to that thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, exactly. Or unless they just move it to Texas or Florida. <laughs> well, well hellfire can moderate. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I was gonna say Texas lifted all their mask requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Did Florida didn't I, I I knew that they're both reopened, but I didn't I didn't know the extent of the uh, you know everything is fineism going on. You know, I don't know, but I'm willing to bet not everyone was keeping super strict to the mask thing down there anyway. But yeah, yeah a little premature. Yep. I mean, we're recording in advance, so everything be fine by the time you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all sunshine and rainbows in two weeks. <laughs> and unicorns. <laughs> you get them down in Arkansas, unicorns? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's a cow with one horn. No, sorry. <laughs> Unicorn pie. Uh, <laughs> all right, so should we get to these issues? Well, let's do it. All right, so yes. Green Lanterns 9 through 12, a guy in his... I say ignore it. You know what? 
I don't care if people say the G is silent. Gnord is funny, funny, more fun to say. It and is. And it's a made up word. Don't put a silent letter in a made up word. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Let's just go with Gnord. <laughs> We're establishing it. That is the norm now. <laughs> Suck it, internet. <laughs> Suck it, Kona. <laughs> I prefer Gakona. Kakona? Gakona. Oh, Gakona. Oh, Gakona. <laughs> Likes your hair, you like the north. <laughs> uh, but yeah, from February through May 91. Uh, all right, so let's see. Ep issue nine, the two and only. <laughs> uh, of course, the controversial Gerard Jones writing, Joe Stanton, mm -hmm. Joe Staten pencils, which I think he. For, going forward for at least what the next year or so of books like he's he becomes like guy gardener's penciler in this book yeah and he has a an interesting kind of you know on the spectrum more of a cartoony style yeah. uh you know kind of a little more exaggerated uh, almost into caricature sometimes i mean he's a good he's a really good artist knows how to tell a story mm. um but yeah does he goes i think he's the artist on that uh like three issue series that guy gets isn't he and then the yeah, the Guy Gardner series when it debuts is an ongoing, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I've, I've I've been I collected the first sixteen issues of Guy Gardner because like DC Universe. Well, it's weird. It's like it starts at nine, but then like fifteen and sixteen are like aren't on there. So between DC Universe and now my paper copies, I have access to every Guy Gardner. <laughs> so yeah. if I'm worth, that's why. I've been reading since I'm a kid. You warped my brain. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, issue nine, the two and only Guy Gardner fully assumes that the Guardians of the Universe will choose Hal Jordan to be the Green Lantern of Sector 2814, leaving him to recruit new members for the Green Lantern Corps and Jon Stewart to look after Oa. Again, it's like, can you see Guy in any of those positions? No. <laughs> Here, we'll make a first impression on some aliens. Guy's jealousy and hot-headedness caused the three lanterns to argue among themselves until the Guardians interrupt. Surprisingly, <sighs> the Guardians select Hal as the recruiter, noting his experience and knowledge of the core requirements. They indicate that he may have a future leadership role. Uh, that, that, that did not age well. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> ish. <laughs> Not for 1994. Stewart is to look after Oa as expected. This leaves Guy as the sole remaining Green Lantern of Earth, and he is ecstatic. Again, didn't they even say it's like, oh yeah, you know, Guy Gardner, you know, can't be trusted out there, and it's like, you know, you know, Guy Gardner has ties to the, to the Earth's Justice League. Yeah, but everybody hates him. I know. I'm, I'm like, no, 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 that's okay. That's okay. It's, it's a mere detail. <laughs> Minor detail. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, when he returns to the Justice League headquarters in New York City, none of the other heroes believe that he's the new Green Lantern of Earth. <laughs> Feeling somewhat defeated, Guy confides in Kilowog. Kilowog reminds him that it's the people who matter, not the heroes. The Guy sets out in search of some people to save. After several destructive and showy saves, Guy, <laughs> Guy hears some, someone address him as a fellow Green Lantern. Impossible, since he, Howe, and John are supposed to be the only ones left. It turns out to be Gnort, self-described Green Lantern at large. Gnort claims he got his ring from the Guardians because his uncle has pulled with <laughs> Guy dismisses him and looks for a new challenge. Guy uses his ring to save a tropical island from destruction by diverting the lava flow of a volcano. But as he stands around accepting their praise, Gnort uses his ring to plug up the volcano, and the building pressure results in a violent eruption. <laughs> Guy is enraged and decides to contact the Guardians to see what the deal was with Gnort. A Guardian appears but seems to have no knowledge of Gnort and notes that the Guardians had withdrawn with the Zamorons long before Gnort claims to have received his ring. Still the ring Gnort bears is legitimate and Guy and Gnort leave Earth on a quest to discover who would be stupid enough to give him a ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, thoughts on this one? <laughs> you know, after the road back, I think that a lot, a much different tone. <laughs> it's a much, yeah, this is just straight up comedy. And I don't know. I feel like it, I felt like it took kind of some of the steam out of the series, you know, cause they were building up to this being, you know, green lantern, green, you know, the book. And then we get, you know, a really, 
a good, a really good ending to the the road back, and then we get four issues of Guy Gardner being, you know, his jerky self, uh, along with the comedy stylings of Ganort and <laughs> Ganute, his uncle, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. At this point, I don't know if that helped or hurt the book because I guess they tried to focus on all three of them because, like, you know, mm-hmm. the, this one's a, a guy arc, and then we get like a one-off next issue, and then we get a John Stewart John. arc, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then there's like one or two one then thons, and then after you know, start with like twenty, we get like that. Well, they all show pretty much eventually, but it's like a how yeah. one, yeah. And and I don't know, does that? I I, I kind of feel like that maybe damaged the the readership a little bit, just because you never know knew who you were going to get, right? And you know, I understand you're trying to focus on the different Green Lanterns, yeah, but. It was really almost kind of like an anthology book, almost. You know, you got mm-hmm. Guy and then Hal and then John and then you know, mix it up. I think they were, and, trying, yeah, they were trying to please everybody, but it's like, yeah. well, if you're not a Guy Gardner fan, you know, you're like, oh, man, the next man. four months are going to be really long for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't really think they were pleasing Hal Jordan fans at all. I mean, in this, you just got a couple panels, and I and I do remember. You know, I told you guys that I read a, a, a couple of these issues before, and I clearly remember Guy Gardner just as a kid, just really rubbing me the wrong way, and not just the boots and the haircut as I've talked <laughs> on before. But I mean, now I kind of respect it in 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 terms of uh, I think that uh, like re- bad guys in wrestling are funny. You know, this is kind of <laughs> he's a bit of a heel. You know, yeah. by design. <laughs> so I, I kind of read this with with a grain of salt, but it, yeah, I, I definitely echo Will's point. It's a it's a big time gear shift from the last storyline, and uh, even though this one's kind of cool because you see it with the Justice League and, and everything, it, it gets weirder in the the next couple issues to the point where I could see how it would turn a lot of readers off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Matt, like back in the day, guy Gardner rubbed me the wrong way, but I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm getting a little more appreciation for him, especially after reading the series, his own his solo series for the first time. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this, you know, the rotating thing hurt the book. Cause that's why they said they did Emerald twilight. Cause the sales weren't that good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's, I have to as fully as much as I really don't like Guy, especially as portrayed here. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a scene in Rebirth where where he just basically you know they they basically bottled up Parallax, yeah. and he kisses the ring and says that's the way the lanterns do it <laughs> because that's <laughs> ultimately you know he's he's said you know he doesn't want to be a lantern, but at his core he's a lantern, and I thought that was just an awesome. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll get there eventually, but. At, that made me like him a lot more at that point. At his core? At his core. <laughs> yeah. Pun intended. Uh, all right. So, get to issue 10. Bring in the clowns. <laughs> yeah. Boy, they, boy, that kind of really spoils things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> from March 1991. Guy and Ganor travel to the planet Gnu. <laughs> <laughs> where they hope that Ganort's uncle Gnuman Gnuman <laughs> hello hello Gnuman <laughs> will shed some light on the people claiming to be the guardians of the universe who are passing out green lantern rings oh probably just came in the mail right <laughs> yeah that <laughs> is disgusted to find a planet of creatures who seem nearly as stupid as Ganort <laughs> When they arrive at Ganuman Ganog's home, <laughs> oh my God. Guy is frustrated to discover that he has been using his ring for his own benefit. Unfortunately, Ganuman isn't very forthcoming and claims he's forgotten who the guardians he got his ring from were. Meanwhile, he covertly alerts the weaponers of Cord to Guy's presence. <laughs> Uh, Guy manages to coerce a mental image of the people from, from whom Ganuman and Ganort got their rings and seeks out Hal Jordan to identify them. Hal wasn't too happy to see Guy, well, who is, but he <laughs> agrees to help. He identifies the false guardians as the Pogla- 
pa Pagliacci named you know, the... yeah. <laughs> it gives Guy the coordinates that are base planted in sector 3273. Before he leaves, Guy suggests that Hal begin recruiting for the Green Lantern Corps by visiting former mess members by like Arisia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I did it there. <laughs> Uh, when Guy and Gen Gnord approach the Pogliacci home world, the Cordians mm -hmm. chase them down and attack. However, they are expecting to fight Hal Jordan, I love this, whose habits they have been familiarized with. They anticipate that the Green Lantern will fake a direct attack and stand their ground, only to be bowled over by Guy, whose direct approach serves him well in this instance. When he corners it, them, though, they are killed by something called the Red Heat. I don't think it kills it. It, uh, it just Injury, it punishes him, uh, doesn't it? Because I think he's alive at the either at the end of this issue or the next issue. When Guy sets foot on the planet, he is soon surrounded by a number of creatures who look like circus clowns and claim to be the guardians of the universe. The Pogliacci. <laughs> Pogliacci. All right, issue 10. <laughs> Deceptive cover. You never see uh, Guy Gardner in a hot uh, in, in a hot tub with the dog babes. <laughs> Just, yeah, you know, get, get babes. You know? Don't act like you never drank in a hot tub. Uh, Matt Conan woke up next to a couple of dogs. Come on. Well, you know, <laughs> I do love the Christmas ornaments or style of the decorations that are all around and. Uh, Oh yeah, weren't they green steaks that were just yeah like, green know, like, steaks like yeah. <laughs> yeah and then it, the green uh, fire hydrants just yeah. a, a line of them <laughs> there was some legitimately and I love Guy Gardner being referred to as an assistant Green Lantern right um, yeah <laughs> yeah. So this this was funny. I don't know if I, as as a person who is a Green Lantern fan, if I, if I just pick this up, uh, looking for my Hal Jordan fix, and you know maybe you'd rather see him doing yard work on a farm, but you know, <laughs> and then you know it introduces introduces some uh, Birdman esque looking villains who were. <laughs> Also wondering where Hal Jordan is and assuming that they will <laughs> find him. Uh, I, I love the outbursts of Guy Gardner, and, and it, it's very comic in nature that the things that he creates to send Gnort away, and <laughs> uh, and being a uh, kind of buttering up to to Hal, trying to get around the fact <laughs> that he's made. Yes, or he needs his help. He, he doesn't want to admit to it and he kind of <laughs> presents it in a different way. And then you see Genort stuck outside, <laughs> whimpering <laughs> in the window like a dog <laughs> waiting to come in. You know, so. But yes, the uh, the, we the weaponers of the antimatter universe of Cord, uh, they, they, uh, they're the ones who created Sinestro's yellow ring that Guy Gardner eventually gets. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, well, I'm trying to remember, I, I don't think they did a lot of it at this point. But couldn't Guy Gardner have asked that ring that to like identify those aliens? Probably, yeah. <laughs> but remember, his approach is the direct approach, not. Oh, the... yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't go from the side. You guess, I, I, I guess right up. I do love that scene where they're like, "Oh yeah, well, how Jordan will just like you know <laughs> fake a direct attack." Wait a minute, that's not how Jordan. I don't think whack. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like if you read those that first eight issues and you're like, man, I love this, and then you get this, it's like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so very different tone. <laughs> very different. <laughs> see, uh, millions are all hanging on the edge of the clown clown uh, cars. There, let's see. Uh... <laughs> and actually, that when they. They drive up to Guy and they get out of a clown car. <laughs> I, <know. Yeah. laughs> I mean, there's some pretty good comedy in this. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, for what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of humorous. Uh, all right, so issue 11 from April 1991. Fools rush in. <laughs> uh, the Weaponers of Quartz 
spared from their punishment at failing to stop Guy Gardner, regroup and increase their efforts to carry out their master's plan to humiliate the Green Lantern Corps. Guys confronted by the Pogliacci's, a race of beings who look like circus clowns. <laughs> Pogliacci's claim to be the real guardians of the universe and that they have been giving Green Lantern rings out for the sole purpose of having fun. When Guy becomes frustrated and decides to take them to the actual Guardians for judgment, he's attacked by a group of clumsy ring welders claiming to be the real core. <laughs> uh, as Guy fights them, the Pogliacci's try to convince Gnort to pick up the fake cores for Guy's own good. Gnort's inner struggle eventually finds him siding with Guy no matter how wrong. Unfortunately, Gnort's intervention causes an energy beam to bounce off of some funhouse mirrors below. <laughs> It Kai knocking him unconscious. Uh, guy wakes up to find that he and Gnord are trapped in restraints that counteract ring powers by using anti Owen ring power. They are soon visited by their captors, the Cordians, who have brought them to Cord in the antimatter universe. They interrogate Guy, hoping to find out where Hal Jordan is. They torture him, but he doesn't comply, and when he seems unconcerned, uh, and when he seems unconcerned, when they threaten to torture Gnort, they simply give up and take them to the master. At first, the master appears to be a resurrected Sinestro. But when there seem to be numerous Sinestros around, they're surprised to see a giant Sinestro welcoming them. Uh, so. Issue 11. Yeah. So cult of uh, the cult of Sinestro. Yeah, I was just uh, catching up on kind of Sinestro's appearances. It looks like he... Uh, I mean, technically, wasn't he kind of supposed to be dead at this point? I mean, we really don't yeah. see the Guardians pull him out of the battery in, what, 50? And, you know, the battle how? Oh, yeah. And then he um, looks like he in inhabits the yellow ring that Guy gets in a little bit. Ew. But I know Guy only wears that ring for a short time before... Uh, you know, parallax. Yeah. It, so. Yeah. Probably like 16, 17 issues. Yeah. Uh, oh, but yes, the Green Lantern core, we will see uh, at least, I think, two of them in the Guy Gardner series. Uh, <laughs> those twins, the one who, keep, who just like always fight. Uh, Brick and Brack or Brick and Brock or something like that. I look up, um, oh, no. Thum and Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they show up in the guy car triple. <laughs> they get they get hired to take out guy. Oh look, get a splash splash page. Mm -hmm. Uh. All right. So, what did you think, Matt? Uh, this one I I did like what I saw of Sinestro before, so this is a little bit kind of jarring i don't know a little different for me so i wasn't feeling this one as much as the, the couple before this i don't know sinestro it just having a, a a bunch of them seemed like a good idea but it didn't really he didn't uh have the same effect it, it, as i had been introduced to i guess yeah and and from from my point of view, Sinestro is lots of people are afraid of him. Okay. He is <laughs> he's he's scary, he's smart, and in my mind, you know, it's good that he didn't show up in this issue because I think to have him in this issue that's comedy would kind of take away from yeah. his stature as the, the guy, right? You know, <laughs> that everybody's no. kind of like, uh, you know, I'd, I'd just rather not mess with him in general. So we've already got a guy in this issue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he's, it, this cult was kind of weird. I mean, it, it's all played for comedy in this. So, oh, yeah. I mean, you get that yeah. value at the end. Oh, giant Sinestro. Yeah. <laughs> And again, technically, he's kind of supposed to be dead, or, or at least yeah. locked up in that battery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, nothing good comes from that antimatter universe. I mean, the Cordians, the anti monitor. Mm -hmm. And we get uh, so when 
Hal entered. So Hal at this point is infected by by Parallax because he got infected while Sinestro was in the battery at the end of Green Lantern Corps. His, was that 224? Yeah. Four. So I, th- which is, explains the white hair, right? The, the white like, temples. Oh, oh yeah, Jeff Jones was going to write Condé. Yeah. That's why he got the white hair, because, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why That's why I'm reading through these now. I'm just like, I'm trying to see, you know, <laughs> any bad decision, <laughs> I guess we can blame on Parallax now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Action Comics Weekly. Sorry. No. Excuse me. <laughs> true. True. I mean, how? I mean, how? I mean, again, keep going back to it. But how? 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 How smart can Parallax be? Couldn't break out of a yellow, uh, yellow safe. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, those yellow lamps are hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> But then that's interesting because, like, when Hal finds out, I mean, they never mention it ever again. But when Hal found out the ring took away his fear and he's like, Give me back fear. I mean, you could just hear Parallax going, Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's my boy. <laughs> All right. So let's get to 12. Uh... Real intense cover for 12. I know. Convert Unleashed. Got mm-hmm. Bloodshot Eyes looks very different than this bumbling buffoon that's been in the last three issues. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever kind of, I don't know if he ever really lives up to the the look of the cover, but he does something. Doesn't he show up in the uh, post Emerald Twilight at some point? Um, and potentially even in the, in the Jeff Johns era. I'd have to look. I'll I'll look while we're, we're yeah, talking to, about. I don't remember much. I don't know if they're big. I know at this, I, you know, after this, he shows up in Justice League when you know guys there. But uh, all right. So issue twelve, the master plan. That's so funny. From May nineteen ninety one. Guy Gardner finds himself surrounded by a number of people who share their appearance with Sinestro. When he remembers that Sinestro is supposed to be dead, they remove their mask and reveal that they are members of a Quardian cult that worships the Renegade Lantern. They worship a giant fire-breathing idol of Sinestro, which is the source of their anti-Owen power. When Guy refuses to divulge the location of Hal Jordan, even under torture, the Quardians bring out Gnort's uncle, Gnuman, Gnuman, to threaten to kill him, and Gnort doesn't tell where Hal is. Gnuman explains that the Weaponers of Kord had used T and Gnort as a part of a scheme to discredit the Green Lantern Corps by giving rings to idiots. <laughs> Even so, Gnort can't bring himself to see his uncle killed, and he gives Hal's location away, despite Guy's protests. The Weaponers set off in search of Hal, leaving Guy and Gnort trapped in restraints. Because the restraints are powered by anti owen energy, Guy can't use his Green Lantern ring without being zapped. While trapped, Guy inadvertently comes to understand how to free himself. Using his energy ring against the restraints will zap him, but eventually the zaps will deplete the energy source holding him back. Despite the pain of the zaps, Guy frees himself and Gnor then head back to the cult's chambers. Guy uses a projection of Hal to distract the weaponers and attacks them. Gnor, left without his power ring, catches the scent of the weaponer who took it and hunts him down as Guy flies straight into the cult's base. Unfortunately, though, Guy's attack is valiant. He is subdued by the giant Sinestro robot's yellow flame. When Gnort confronts his target, he seems to be at a disadvantage until his loyalty to Guy gives him the courage to attack without powers. Gnort aims his ring at the robot, knowing that destroying it will remove his powers and sacrificing them for the greater good. Then together, he and Guy fight without their powers to the transporter that will take them back to the positive matter universe. They escape just as the chamber explodes. Meanwhile, Hal receives a message from Guy just in time to warn him of the Weaponer's attack, and he surprises them by getting backup from his most recent recruits for the Corps. Mm -hmm. The transporter drops Guy and Gnord back in Sector 3273, the planet of the Pogliacci. There, the fake Green Lantern Corps are waiting to fight, but when they realize they don't have power rings anymore, Guy is lenient with them and leaves them to their stupidity. Uh... Guy, Gnord is depressed that he has lost his power, but Guy, having taken a liking to the dog despite himself, suggests that he might put in a good word with the real Green Lantern Corps. 
Uh, okay, so I have uh, Ganort here. Um, it looks like his planet is, he was living in Guy Gardner's bar for a while, so he shows up in the Guy Gardner series. Um, in the Green Lantern Sinestro Corps Secret Files and Origins, he's listed as presumed dead, but uh, Jeff John said he was just missing. And then he shows up at the in the New 52 at the end of the events of Wrath of the First Lantern. And helps uh, against the Red Lanterns. Looks like, yep. um, and then he uh, becomes. Uh, the rings mutually determine that Larflees and Ganort are cousins, and Ganort becomes Larflees' sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> are they even I, the species? They're cousins. I don't know. I I don't remember. We'll we'll get there eventually. Yeah, I guess. Get there. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm probably been there since they were new. Yeah. But yeah, we see some of uh, Hal's new recruits in this. Now, one of them is okay. So that's Chasalon, is yeah. the the crystal one. Let's see, it might be mentioned on this page. Let me see. Uh, and the other one, uh, he's more of a plant-looking one. He shows up quite a bit, I think, in this series, and then you know, even after Rebirth, I think he shows up quite a bit. So it, yeah, it's Chasalon, Brick, and Larbox. Cool. So yeah, they become kind of longtime uh, core members, which is cool. Oh yeah, this is Brick's first appearance. Awesome! And, and, and another female of indeterminate species falls in love with Hal Jordan. <laughs> Wait, is that is that every issue? I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the longest time, I mean, I mean, Al Jordan was like the Captain Kirk of this thing, yeah? That's right. <laughs> uh, all right, Maddie, what do you think of the wrap up here? Um, I I thought it was an improvement on the last issue. I guess I I, I like the the comic moment where Guy Gardner is like, if Hal Jordan was here, he would think of a way to do this by <laughs> doing this and. And Genort kind of deadpans, yeah, you, you just did it, and so uh, <laughs> it works his way out like that. And uh, um, I would assume they do that for comedic value, but something it almost smacked me of like, hey, that's kind of like, well, like guy guy was before all the brain damage tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I like I liked seeing the. The, the new cast that because Hal hasn't just been sitting in mm -hmm. in this room waiting to give advice to Guy Gardner <laughs> when he shows up, you know, he's been doing the work. He's been scouring the galaxy. Mm -hmm. I know he was off kind of on a mission when uh, the, there was supposed to be a siege on it earlier. And, eh, you know, I, I don't know if it had to be a four issue arc, but it was, uh, <laughs> I could have used more Ganort face licking because it gets referred to in a, in a funny panel at the end, but you don't actually see any of it. You know, so. uh, but yeah, like how like out there, like trying to recruit like different kinds of green lanterns and was it? Well, I think like issue 22 or 23, you know, the whole star Sapphire thing. He's like, man, I've, I've recruited enough thinkers. I need some brawlers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what getting at. Well, and you know, I, I guess we'll get to it, but the fact that the Guardians actually give Gnort a ring is just, <laughs> you know, insane. <laughs> but they do. So. Yeah. Well, I, th I think part of that, too, was even like, well, I think he kind of tempers Guy Gardner a little bit. Uh huh. <laughs> right. Uh, just a little. Just a little. Mm. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, letter grades, what would you guys give this? arc as a whole i don't know c plus Ooh. maybe yeah yeah i think i think matt's uh yeah i think matt's on the matt's on to something there i think that's yeah wow in I the past when i've gotten c pluses i don't get a lot of positive reinforcement from it, so. <laughs> good job <laughs> I, again if you were here for the tone of the first thing issues yeah this was kind of a letdown yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
But I mean, it holds together under its own internal consistency pretty well. And it's, you know, it's yeah. funny. It's yeah, it's yeah really there's funny. moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as a Green Lantern reader, it's certainly not kind of what I'm looking for in Green Lantern, you know, and not just saying that as, you know, a fan of Hal Jordan, but also a fan of Jon Stewart and, mm -hmm. you know, eventually Kyle and the rest of the core. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's just not, it's totally too too out there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think we're all agreed on the C plus. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, but uh, next week, one issue, Green Lantern 13. So you know what that means. One issue, back to the library. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Less homework. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I believe Matt Macona already called uh, Guy Gardner, so... I think that makes perfect sense. I can just hear, I, I can hear Matt doing that voice now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then in two weeks, yeah, Green Lantern 14 through 17, the setup for the mosaic. So, yes, Kona's going to get his mm -hmm. trace hand. <laughs> oh, boy. John Stewart's going to be psyched. Yeah. We may have to have some special background music, right? I was going to say, if it wasn't copyrighted, the whole time was right there. Get music in the back. So let's see that two weeks gets us up to 17. We're probably, what, a month or two out? Well, 17, 20 more issues. We're probably two months out from Emerald Twilight then? Um, I mean, we have a, a while to go. Um. Oh, I don't have the uh, Emerald Twilight will be episode 34. We're on oh, okay. episode five. So, yeah, I mean, we, gotcha. again, once Guy Gardner starts, we're going to mix some Guy Gardner in there. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then remember, there's like a Trinity crossover in, the, in there. <laughs> Somewhere. <yeah. laughs> oh, and, and the Mosaic issues once that series starts. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And those. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's been, I haven't read those since they originally came out, so I'm I'm excited to be revisiting those. Yeah, but yeah, next week will be a live read, and then uh, it'll be a while. But then once we get Green Lantern 25 as an episode by itself, that's a live read, and then uh, the episode after that will be Ganthit's Tale. So. Oh, sweet. That's a good one. I haven't read that in a long time either, so that's... So the whole, a whole episode uh, dedicated to that, so that could be another live read. Mm hmm some awesome John Byrne art on it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Love John Byrne art. So yeah, lots of good stuff coming up, kitties. Uh all right, so any final thoughts, gentlemen? Um I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds as someone who's going in this as a, uh, a rookie, a rugga rookie, if you please. <laughs> <Go rookie. laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I like comedy and I like Guy Gardner being a jerk <laughs> and we'll see if they could steer more towards, I, I know that the, the next issue is double size, right? With the three yeah. green lanterns. So to see how, uh, how they coexist together as a trio again. I mean, I saw, we saw a little bit with John Stewart having to be rescued mostly, but um, I'm, so, I'm sort of looking forward to seeing how the, the balance occurs. Isn't there a, uh, is it uh, eight, 18? Isn't there like a anniversary issue coming up? Uh, no, 18 is like a guy solo uh, story. 19 is the uh, 19. Okay. Yeah, with the whole John Stewart thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're doing both of those in one episode. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. So, yeah. Like you, Matt said, uh, Green Lantern 13 was double size. So, it was a whole dollar 75. Bam. Wow. Those were the days. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, 91. Jeez. <laughs> Does anyone else remember? I think the first, it was the first George Bush to put like the paper tax on because before that they weren't even taxed. It was like so if it, they were a dollar, it was a straight dollar. There wasn't even tax on it for a while. <laughs> I don't remember. The, I I know it couldn't have been the first George W because I read his lips. No new taxes. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 would count. So. <laughs> You know, as a reader, I when I was very, very, very young, 
Um, I remember I could get four comics for a buck twenty. And then they went up to 40 cents and suddenly I could only get three. Inflation, man. Inflation. <laughs> yeah, my era when I started, it was kind of like going from 75 cents to the dollar, making the jump to the dollar. Yeah, that's where around the time I started. And you know, it's it, it took them a long time to, you know, make those first few jumps, but then it's just like jumping almost every year, it seemed like just getting more and more and more and more expensive. Oh yeah, I think once we hit two dollars, it started jumping pretty quick. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious how many pages a double sized issue would be nowadays. Um, twenty two, I mean, twenty two pages. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> ouch. Ouch. <laughs> uh, I was a little bit pages. I was a little bit shocked to see that, uh, like standard story length now from Marvel is like 20 pages because you know, I always thought 22 pages is the standard length. And then, uh, you know, a double sized issue would be, you know, like a, one of those 52 page giants or you remember the old hundred page giants from DC, which were, you know, these yeah. ginormous things full of comics, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I well, DC's kind of gotten back to that, right? I, I, I got a couple hundred page giants randomly, like the swamp thing and a Batman one. Yeah, they were doing those at Walmart, I think, and yeah. I think they're doing them at Target now too, which is pretty cool mm -hmm. when you think about it because that's those they get those stories out there to a lot more eyeballs. Yeah, hopefully some new readers that way. Well, and think, places that don't have comic shops or aren't mm -hmm. privy enough to buy online. Yeah, yeah well, that's like uh, Batman that came out. Well, I was gonna say today, but yesterday. I mean, it was it was a little longer, but they're charging four ninety nine because you got the regular story, and then they put like a Damien backup in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, we've had uh, we've had issues with backup stories. I mean, you look at the Avengers crossing line, yeah. uh, Captain America, you know <laughs> that we were going through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but I to say some of the Marvel books. I don't wonder if they try to cheat because <clears throat> some of them, you know, still do letter columns. Like <clears throat> Matt Kona, when was that? Like a year or two ago, you got in Guardians. Oh of the yeah, Marvel. yeah, yeah. I'm still but, riding high. From, from that. Yeah. <laughs> Because like a few weeks, was it? I don't think it was last week. A few weeks ago, whenever the last Spider Woman issue came out, uh, our good friend Ray Ray was uh, in the got his letter printed in uh, Spider Woman. Oh, well, that's awesome! Congrats, Whoa. Ray. Didn't didn't see that. Yeah. That was just a really nice package. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I told him. I said, "Man, I gotta start writing into these books, man." You gotta. So I think he said. Absolutely. So I think he said. I don't know if he wrote one the Spider Man too, but it didn't go through. I was like, yeah, well, Spider Spider Man. Everyone's probably writing the Spider Man. Yeah, a lot of traffic for that. And you know, not exactly everybody does a podcast for Spider Man, but Spider Woman. There you go, the <laughs> Spider Woman podcast. That's true. The <laughs> Spider Woman. Podcast. Yeah, but uh, I don't even mention it in the letter. I'm like, man, man, if my letter ever gets through, you know, it's going to be capes and lunatics all over that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, it is I, Phil Parrish from the Capes and Lunatics podcast. <laughs> I just were uh, writing in. I wanted to discuss this newest issue of uh, Green Lantern that we will discuss on our uh, show. Section two, of course. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, wouldn't it be funny to just write in? Uh, with your thoughts on Green Lantern issue 11 from 1990. <laughs> I would not steal your shit, Kona. <laughs> That'd be good. No, I, for, I forget the, what the one, uh, well, I forget what we were talking about, but uh, Lilith and I were recording the one day and she's like, she's like, was it this one? And I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, good. I don't want to pull Kona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not the 1960s version. Second yeah. <laughs> <Suck it, Cole. laughs> uh, All right. So, yes. <clears throat> so, next time, yes, return of our live reads that we used to do in the Quantum Zone for Green mm -hmm. Lantern 13. So, get your issue and read along, kids. And then in get two your ring and read along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, in two weeks, we get that. Uh, mosaic setup arc uh get your get your oh see kids you can listen to the podcast listen to stray saying in the background <laughs> yeah sync it up oh my god so 
So the week after next, Kona's going to just be listening to Stray Sands all week. Prepping. Oh, yeah. Getting in character. <laughs> <laughs> Don't doubt no, me. No, for 13, I'm John Stewart because, yeah, because oh. Kona picked Guy Gardner, remember? Oh, that's right. Of course, we're going to give, <laughs> of we're give you how, Jordan. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. my guy. He's my guy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kate. So, yeah, so send your thoughts for all those. <clears throat> Email capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737 at 614 38 capes. And remember to follow Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast, on Facebook, Twitter. I can find links to all of the social media for all of our various shows, links to this YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch it, you can watch us, our pretty face. I mean, our pretty faces. <laughs> Myself, Will, Kakona down there. Uh, <laughs> Comedy gold. Comedy gold. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, links to the Patreon. Oh, Patreon. That's right. If anyone wants to join us, I don't know when we're doing it. Sometime this month, I think. Uh, Wolf and I are going to do the first episode of Boob Windows and Long Boxes, and we're going to talk about some of how Jordan's not so great moments. Eurysia <laughs> yeah, is coming up. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> All right, so yes, links to the Patreon, links to merchandise, links to everything all in one place. That's Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R, me slash Capes and Lunatics. And remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio and Hunt the Killer. Use the code Southgate for both of those for discounts. Uh, and then go pick up Odd Life the Book, now on digital and paperback. Learn all about podcasting. Hey, I'm in there. Uh, but you can get that on Amazon. And when you do, use the link to Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support the show, the network, and that strange idol in the antimatter universe of Cord, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain, so says Master Doom. Please kick me in the pants. Mark my words. All right, Gakona, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me. I might have to switch my handle, but uh, at Matt Kona. <laughs> right, right now, there's no G in it, but uh, who knows? The night is young, and, and, that, and that's on Instagram, where you can watch me post daily stories of uh, my dog running around, being silly at the dog park, and occasionally pictures and things like that. But that's all I'm really doing right now. <laughs> Getting ready to have a baby. I gotta. I'm just getting my head's wrapped around that concept. Still, so. uh, I can do it. You little funkies. I'm just waiting for the conversation with Little or anyone else. Why is there a G in front of Kona's name? Because he thinks he's a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a dog. A Green Lantern dog. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. He's, 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 He's chasing cars. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. We didn't talk about the epic game of fetch that happened, too. But <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 These, these recaps really leave out a lot of the silliness. Yeah. <laughs> even, the, even the recappers was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All Just right. Red Bull. Yeah. Speaking of a man and his dog, uh, Will Allred, master <laughs> of uh, the core. Where can people find you? Ooh, wait, there's my dog. Uh, you can find me at Walred at W A L L R E D uh, on Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and probably Instagram. Although I don't know that I actually go there very often. Uh, you can also find some of my self-published work at DiaryOfNight.com, uh, which is. Uh, with art by uh, Gene Gonzalez and letters by Russ Wooten. You can also find Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com, which will be uh, printed soon and shipping out to all the Kickstarter backers. So I'm happy about that. And then you can always find all kinds of really cool stuff about Quasar uh, at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. I'll put it in my navel. I hope it's going somewhere nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, live read next week. Might get some new dr some cheap Green Lantern drops next time. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to, re I'm gonna have to re read that yet again. Just to see, okay, what's going to get to say as Gardner? <laughs> <laughs> Scout it out. I'm gonna probably be referring to people as dames. It's gonna be great. <laughs> this dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<sighs> but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what you guys, but I'm having fun with this Green Lantern stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's uh, it's uh, reminding me how much I love Green Lantern, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Warts and all, right? Even the guy. <laughs> That's right. Even the guy Gardner stuff. <laughs> All right, kids, go walk the dog and join us next time.